Mini episode 230 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by LaughAtSports.com, your new internet home for the convergence of athletics and comedy. Follow them on the web at LaughAtSports.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Two on my big three, 0 and one on my lock, uh, culminating with uh, a real skid at the end of the year there on my lock picks. 129, 124, and three for the year overall, so not even above the uh, the juice mark there. 25, 25, and one on the big three, eight and nine on my lock picks, quote unquote lock. First time I've ever used the air quotes for that. So yeah, it, 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 my worst year of picking in, in quite a while. I mean, not that I'm Kyle Ross or anything like that, but I generally do better than that. Kyle with a three and zero week. 38, 24, and 1, 61%. Verified, verified, verified for the year. I'll tell you what. I remember when we first started doing this endeavor yeah. back in September. Mm-hmm. And you said, how are you going to do this? I'd feel really bad if you came on and I hyped you and you did really bad. And I said, you know what, Ricky? I don't think I'll I said really bad. Well, but it's not, just, or you just said mediocre. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, it's like, well, no, it's just, like I the just, Cowboys. They should be great, but they're always mediocre. What if I was the Dallas Cowboys and I showed all this talent and didn't produce the results? So... I was like, well, what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm just going to give away the recommended ones yeah. that I really, really like, as opposed to just picking right. every game. I mean, you, you were up against it. I mean, you you, you took the, on the endeavor of, hey, I'm going to pick every game, whether I really like it or not. Yeah. Me, I just stuck to the ones I really liked. These are the ones you need to bet. And as a result, we did really well. Well, my, my thing is, again, and, and I can say this and, and, and peel back the cheese curtain at least a little bit here. Uh, let, let's face it, that in your previous life, uh, you know, making these, you know, picks professionally and everything like that. In a lot of places, I'm not saying where you were, but there was a lot of times puffery. And <laughs> I was 90% for the season. And I'm like, okay, people are going to see Kyle Warts and all here. So it's like, that's what just like, as a friend, yeah. I was like, okay. I, like, I, it wasn't I didn't have confidence in you, but you did what nobody else in your industry does. You stepped out on the live wire without a net, and you were 61%. Yes, I appreciate it. And God, I don't know what I did. Well, you know, we were real mediocre there down the stretch, too, but he turned up 5-0 and oh the last two weeks, yeah. in case you remember. Last week, yeah. was, last week was real nice. Buffalo and Tennessee were a couple of good wins. And right. then, um, you know, Washington. We Was Washington the one we agreed on? Yeah, it was. Okay, it was. Washington was the one. Now i got to look that up. I, I think our, our the ones we agreed on for, for big picks for the year, we did very well. Yeah, so Washington, it was, it was hairy. We needed, yeah. of course, the Tony Romo late-game interception. Yeah. Who would have thunk it <laughs> to get the cover there because no, otherwise the game would have probably fallen on the number. Right. But we got that, and now we're in the playoffs, yep. and I just wanted to make note of one thing. Okay. It was something we were kind of monitoring all year, going all the way back to when we were crunching some numbers in our preseason division-by-division division previews. Mm-hmm. I referenced this stat, and we I know you were following it throughout the year as well, about since the division, fo- uh, since pardon me, the playoff format was realigned in 1990, mm-hmm. there had never been less than four repeat playoff entrance yeah and never more than eight and for a good portion of the season when we were kind of crunching the numbers and breaking things down it looked like a new high water mark would be established with nine right uh, particularly because the afc there was just so little turnover right other than indianapolis replacing pittsburgh there, there were no I mean, we have five of the same you know five of the six playoff teams from last year in the afc have made it again this year mm-hmm. but with minnesota and then, you know, Washington was the real key, the late surge to get past the Giants and the NFCs. It was pretty clear both wild cards were going to be different in the right. NFC, but it was the NFC East, Washington supplanting the Giants. It hit eight. So, again, you know, that stat is still in effect, that there has never been more than eight repeat playoff entrants uh, from year to year. And I think when you look at some of the newer ones this year, obviously anyone who's listened to the show the last couple weeks know I have extremely high regard for one of them. Yes. But 
when I'm ranking these teams, and I wanted to get into this, Ricky, before we broke down the individual wild card matchups this week, mm -hmm. where we have the 12 teams that are left okay. in our power rankings. Yep. For me, at least, and I, and I think it was the same with you, there was a pretty significant break in the 12. It wasn't yep. quite 50-50. It wound up being seven above, five below the we Mendoza both had line. That. We both had of the teams same number that of teams. that I think that could win the Super Bowl. And I'm, yes. to be honest with you, even a little shaky on seven, so it could be 50-50. But there's five teams, three of them the new, new entrants, that I, I cannot see winning the Super Bowl. Okay. And it starts with the, team, the weakest playoff entrant is Minnesota to me. See, I have Baltimore at 13. By the way, I have Chicago overall. at 10. Yeah. Okay, oh, so, you have, so Chicago is your top non-playoff team. They're my top non-playoff team as well. Yeah. But Minnesota, and, and in a couple weeks, I know we were talking about we're going to go over the league as a whole, mm -hmm. revisit our preseason predictions. Minnesota was a team that I thought was going to be the worst team in the NFC before the year. And I don't know how they made the playoffs. I know the simple answer is Adrian Peterson. But I think like a lot of people, I, I know they were the na they were on locally here in Cleveland, weren't they last week? I, I've been just, yes. I, I'm, I'm addicted to this red zone, so I, I don't even watch the local yes. network. Okay, I know that. So I had, in full candor, I had not watched a lot of Vikings games this year. Mm -hmm. I, I was just always mystified when they won. Like how is this happening? So I watched them in good detail last week. I just can't believe Peterson breaks loose. And we'll talk about this more when we fo give our pick on the Packers Vikings game in a little bit. With Christian Ponders, therefore, in a league where you're not supposed to be able to win without a quality quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we saw Alex, the 49ers with Alex Smith make it to the NFC title game last year, and he was kind of the proverbial game manager. But Alex Smith was much better last year than Christian Ponder was this year. Right. I don't even think it's comparable. So the Vikings, for me, are the clearly the worst team. And what's interesting about that is I was convinced, you know, for weeks on end here – that Indianapolis was going to be by far the ugly duckling of the 12 playoff teams. Right. And I, I have several non-playoff teams ahead of them. I only have Indianapolis 15 overall, 11 among the 12 playoff teams. When you look at their results, I've said this before, the Colts very quickly, I thought, went from underrated to overrated in that when you look at their schedule, the bulk of the results are close wins over bad teams. Now, mm -hmm. they did have a very emotional win in the regular season when they, they had really nothing to play for except, you know, inspirational stuff or obviously surrounding the Chuck Pagano situation when they beat Houston. And Houston had far more to play for, and they came up small, more on them later. But the Colts are a team that they feel like they overachieved, or at least I feel like they overachieved moving into. And I don't know about you. I mean, where, where, where did, I mean did you have them? I mean, Minnesota was your 12th out of 12 players. No, they weren't. You had Baltimore actually ranked, like you said. Right. Okay, so I'm surprised. What about Indianapolis for you? Well, here, here's what I got. I, in, in this order here, and this may confuse folks a little bit once we get to the, uh, the, the, the game picks here, but I got Baltimore 13, Indy 12. So that, that game to me, pfft, whatever. Well, I uh, thought what's funny is before Minnesota snuck in, which I didn't think they were going to do, I thought they were going to lose last mm -hmm. week. I was convinced that Baltimore and Indy would be my two bottom teams, and I, it looked like they were going to meet for yeah. a while, for a couple weeks. So it, They are ahead. my bottom two. Okay. Yeah, I, I, got, I got Cincinnati 11, as we said, Chicago 10. I got Minnesota 9 and Washington 8. The thing I'll say in Minnesota's favor is, uh, and again, as I was uh, pointing out before we went on the air here, what I also do is I total up the power rankings by division, and, and just for divisional strength. The NFC North, the best division in football by far. And Minnesota went 10 and 6. I think they're you a fraud three, also, Kyle. You had three 10 win teams and then three a very disappointing teams. Detroit team. Yeah, and uh, it's, a, it's a great, great division. I think they're a fraud also. But scoreboard, 10 and 6 in and that they division. They beat some good teams. Remember, they beat the 40. Remember? I when still they don't beat, know how half those wins yeah, happened. They, well, again, I guess and it's just as simple as Peterson. And, and no Percy Harvin a good chunk of the time. Yeah. I mean, as much as, and not that that makes things better for, for uh, evaluating Ponder, because I think he's subpar as well, but in fairness, didn't have him there. And then I got a Washington 8. Washington, yeah. to me, is the team below the line right there. Yeah, I have Washington as my number 8 as well. I mean, they were really, really hot. I mean, seven straight wins, seven straight covers to end the regular season. They but started my year at 29, by the way, because one of the things, if wow, you look at my power yeah. rankings, you can see the progression through the season. I have it to where you can look at how I had them every week. 29 to 20 to 21 to 25. I had them making their way up in there, uh, but yeah, I had them Oh, they were a real late bloomer for me, too. I mean, 
you know, I mean, Minnesota 30, by the way, at the beginning of the season for me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I had Minnesota 30. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, Washington was a team I think both you and I yeah. projected for last place Indy, in that Indy division. Indy 24, for that matter. Yeah. So, a lot of teams came from nowhere. Yeah, and, and with me, just, just to rehash kind of the second-tier playoff teams, I've got Baltimore number 10. So, I mean, you had Baltimore ranked last among all playoff teams. Baltimore's not a team I really believed in. But I feel the market somewhat shifted down on them a little bit. When they okay. were nine and two, they were completely overrated. Now that they're ten and six, I feel that they're more in their right spot. Uh, Cincinnati. To be honest with you, I'll be. You know, I was thinking about this because I know I sent this to you, mm -hmm. and you've got a post at the fdhlounge.blogspot.com. I think Cincinnati might actually be better than Washington right now. Okay. Those teams are pretty. They're close. Yeah, it, it's almost like an eight A and, and an eight B there. But above that, the teams that I thought that think that can win it all, we've got to agree that Houston's number seven at this point. You I have can't a, have Houston above any of these other top I six. have Atlanta seven. I, 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 you? I, I, I of Freddy, all people. Freddie Falcon, the guy who had Atlanta number one for a good chunk of the year. I was out on that limb. I have Atlanta seven, Houston six. And I had them one, two, Atlanta, Houston, one, two for many, 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 probably about half the season. But right now, Atlanta seven, Houston six. What's so interesting about that, see, I've got Houston seven, Atlanta six. Okay. Is that going into last week, mm -hmm. this time, when you know, this time last week, these were, Atlanta did already have home field clinched. Houston was in position to, they blew it horrifically and are now three in the conference. Mm -hmm. These teams could have been the two that had home field advantage in their respective conferences. Yeah. Would Houston have been higher had they not lost last week for you? Clearly. Clear. Th those really? last two for me, losses. For me, I wouldn't have had them higher than six, even if they would have won last week. Uh, those last two losses really exposed The, the them. Minnesota one was, was bad. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to go as far as Bill Barnwell on Grantland, where he's saying they're the best balanced team in the league, but they are incredibly balanced, yep. well, at least until the end of the season. Aren't they Houston, Atlanta? Yeah, Look, they are. Look, I've made yeah. fun of Atlanta all year. They're critics fans. They don't do anything wrong, but their ceiling's not as high as the top five. So we've got the same top five. The other thing, too, though, and what, what confuses me, and as much as I hear people putting over Mike Nolan and everything like that, okay, the Falcons' defense better this year, but, I mean, they're not a juggernaut. No, you can run no. on them. Especially can, compared to, yeah. well, you know, New England, who we haven't mentioned yet, sure. doesn't have a great defense. But I, I think the other four, and right. Green Bay, quite frankly, doesn't either. But um, the problem with Atlanta is, mm -hmm. and I can't wait till the – the divisional round okay. when they've got to host them because I think we're you and I are really going to fight tooth and nail on those unfair, two matches. This is unfair what's happening to them. They're going to draw the hot it, team it, it, again. It, it happens every time. So we've got yeah. the same teams in the top five. I guarantee they're not in the same order. But here's my top five. Okay. Green Bay, okay. I have at number five. All right. I dropped them a spot with a loss to Minnesota last okay. week. They have the best quarterback in the league operating behind probably a bottom three offensive line. And I think they don't match up well with the two NFC West teams if they were to run into them. Maybe not, but I, I got a one. I, I think they're the team to beat. And I they were your preseason pick. To they win the Super were. Bowl. And I know you. You're a strict constructionist. Uh, I, you, I, you original intent, yeah, my original friend. Original intent. We don't want to go beyond those first ten amendments, do we? Give me yeah, a break. I, well, you ought to be ashamed I, of yourself. I think they can put up 30 on anybody. Okay. Yeah. That's true, but they can give up to 30 to a lot of teams as well. 31, 30 wins. Yeah. <laughs> Number four. And I'm surprised because I thought this was going to be – is this your number five? Uh, I'm not looking at your thing okay. right now. I know I've looked at it already. Okay. Denver is my number four. I got Denver two, actually, shockingly. See, I'm And I started Denver at 21, but I, but they made it up to two in mine at the end. Uh, hardly anybody's hotter than them. Yeah, they're uh, not. But, again, you, I'm surprised you have them at two because the who have they beaten – and, look, we're not going to talk about Denver much this week because yeah. they're off, obviously – Home field helps, but I'm still not sure I would take them, and that's why I, in the what's going to be the AFC Championship game, I think everyone is going to pick. Yep. Uh, even at home against my number three team, New England. Spoiler, I won't pick them to win that, but I have them too. Yeah, my, my power rankings are as of right now. Okay. Not necessarily what I'm thinking. Down okay. The road. Okay. See, mine yeah. kind of were. I, I okay. don't. I don't really sense shifting mine. Okay. But I mean, then again, I always think I'm right. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got Green Bay five, Denver four, New England three. Where'd you have New England? I got New England four. Okay. So we're close. And then so okay, your number five team must be my number two, San, San Francisco. Francisco. Yes. Okay. San, I, I think San Francisco is talented as any team left. 
look, there, wa- there was a little bit of regression. You know, the regression analysts were low on this team coming into this year. They mm-hmm. s- they, no one in their right mind thought they were going to match last year's 13-win total. Right. The division was certainly tougher this year, the NFC West. And how? And what better illustration of that is than you know me. I thought at this time last week, because th- this was my top team in the league at this time last week, and I thought when we did this, when I came up with this idea, this would be this big surprising thing and ever it would make waves and people would say i can't believe what you're saying mm-hmm. i have a feeling i'm not the only person in america who thinks this my number one team heading into the playoffs is the seattle seahawks i got them three i, I mean they could beat anybody true but it's it just i i, I gotta i gotta it? see more okay we're gonna talk about this when we break down mm-hmm. the game with them and the redskins yeah how much of it with seattle is all oh, the road record for you and part, and, part of it's and that, that it's Seattle and that they're going to have to play the games on the road they will yes a yeah, rookie quarterback and everything else like that which by the way to go back to the other NFC West team the one that you have too there's some questions in my mind also here too after the great start in the first prime time game here Colin Kaepernick uh really shined in the spotlight I think that first game there but subsequently been some questions Vernon Davis hasn't been a big part of the offense since then so there are still some questions as to what can happen there I think it was the right choice, and how interesting is it? And I'm going to tip my cap because I was very critical of Coach Him Up Pete mm-hmm. before the. You know me; I've I've ripped Coach Him Up Pete me too. basically his entire tenure yes. in Seattle. And before the year started, this was interesting. You picked Seattle to win that division. Yes, I picked San Francisco, and my rationale for not backing Seattle more was that I really wasn't sold on Coach Him Up Pete's track record, and he made a very unconventional decision at quarterback before the year he's like hey i know we just gave matt flynn all this money i like russell wilson better Mm -hmm. and we're gonna go with russell wilson even though it makes no financial sense and i was like you know i don't trust coach him up pete so i'm thinking coach him up pete's gonna make is making the wrong move Mm -hmm. coach him up pete made that is probably the single greatest coaching decision of 2012 his decision to start russell wilson at the beginning of the year he may be the front runner for coach of the year right now yeah and remember the three of the five teams that beat seattle Mm mm-hmm they wound up beating them back. It was funny. Remember, I right. told you this last week. They started 0-3 in the division. Right. They then avenged all three of those losses. So, n- ironic that they were 0-3 in division road games. But Seattle, for me, when I look at them, is just the most complete team. They have a lot of characteristics of some past championship teams that we've seen. Again, it's never the team who's 13-3, and 14-2, and 15-1 and in the regular season. Like we, you know, mm-hmm. Green Bay, fifteen and one in the regular season. Right. You know, enjoy your set of steak knives. You know. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's not exactly March Madness, but there is a sense that you know, in this tournament, you you not start from scratch, but you do have to. In, in a world where the Giants can win the Super Bowl at it's nine and peak, seven, it's who's kind of playing the best at right. that time. The Giants. Right. I mean, you you can't totally throw out the first half of the season. Right. But we talked about this when we first started. On the reason I picked Houston mm-hmm. to win it all before the year was it was such a clean, safe pick. So balanced, really. Be, yeah. it, well, just because, okay, they're in a... They can run, know, they can I, pass, they got the a great Col- defense. The Colts were a huge surprise. Sure. And, and we were, I thought, kind of more optimistic on them than most. I think we were. But their division was easy, Houston's, going mm-hmm. into the year. I mean, who would, I mean, everyone picked Houston. I mean, they had to sure. be... Along with New England, they were the two unanimous picks as division winners, I think, among anyone who matters. They sure. Picked. So they were safe. They, they were going to dominate the division. They, were, they had made kind of a run into the playoffs last year without Matt Schaub. So it, it just seemed like a clean, safe pick. But if you remember, I said, I reserve my right to change this. Right. And what's funny is I was going to still ride them to win the AFC before last week. Okay. And I, I, even though I would have had them lower than New England and Denver in the power rankings, I just thought that kind of the advantage of avoiding both of them until a home game in the AFC Championship game right. again made them a clean, safe pick. And what's funny is by the, I would have picked them again this week. If they're the one seed, I would have kept two. Because yeah, my preseason my pick was Green Bay over Houston. I would have ridden them if they were the one seed. But with Houston, it's funny. I would have picked them because what we're going to do at the end of the show is we're going to pick the whole playoff picture after we do the wild card games. We're going to pick we're gonna the whole agree play- on most. I think we will too, but the thing is, I would have picked Houston to still win the AFC at the end of this program Mm -hmm. had they won last week, Okay, but I would have then possibly changed it in the AFC Championship game based on who they were. I mean, obviously, look, they 
they, they sucked the big one against New England on Monday right. night. I mean, that was an eye-opener. I'm not sure if they recovered. And quite frankly, the disappointment of now having to play. I mean, all year, I think they were kind of the mindset, okay, we're going to be off that wild card weekend. Mm-hmm. They're playing, and they're up first, and I think that's kind of a good transition to go to these games mm-hmm. where they'll be hosting Cincinnati mm-hmm. in the 430 game, the first game Saturday. They're laying four and a half right now is the number I got. Had been five at the opener, yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, Ricky. Come full sir, uh, I have jumped off the Houston bag win completely. I am taking Cincinnati with the points in this matchup. They may win the game outright. That's, that's exactly my reasoning. I'm taking them with the points. I still think Houston's going to win the game, but it's one of these things where... Close game. Yeah, it's going to be close. It will not be like... Remember, these teams met last year uh, in the same 430 death spot. Kind of yeah. the, you know, the spot, the, the, the one game the TV network execs don't like as yeah. much as always they get. And Houston really dominated the game with TJ Yates. Right. It just seems that Cincinnati has arrived a year early. With their, I mean, they're hot. They're a hot <laughs> AFC. Other than Denver... Who's hotter than Cincinnati right now in the AFC? They're they're very hot. I, again, and, and it was the Oilers, not the Texans, but if you go back to the uh, the 70s and 80s here, yeah, maybe even the 90s, the old AFC North rivalry between the cities of Houston yeah. and, and Cincinnati. Central not, at the time. Or Central, be, I'm sorry. Not Central. Pick, I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. Uh, Central. No, no I, I, the funny thing is I meant to say Central, but I blurted out North anyways. Yeah, Central. Uh, but, yeah, so a little, little bit of history uh, there. And uh, now it, those are the days when uh, it was not uh, Bum's son up in the uh, press box, uh, you know, where, where you know, looking down on the field. It was Bum himself uh, on the sidelines for those old Oilers. Yeah, again, I have such regard for Houston, but again, the, the last couple weeks just inexplicable the way that they have slid back. Those losses to Minnesota and then subsequently to Indianapolis, I got to tell you too. Well, we think are the two worst playoff. Well, you don't, but I do. I think are the two worst playoff teams, and just there were about. several non-playoff teams that I have ranked better than them. Well, and, and here's the thing, too. In, in, in looking at this uh, weeks back and uh, talking to uh, FDH uh, Director of Research Nate Noy, we were anticipating, with Houston playing Indianapolis twice in the last three weeks, a, a blurb on, on the schedule, don't exactly know how that happened. That, that probably shouldn't. He should probably break those games up a little more. But anyways, that Houston might have the one seed or at least a bye locked up before then that Indianapolis might have a chance to yeah. steal two games, and instead Indianapolis went out there last week and earned it against Houston. They did. And when you look at Houston's results, they did beat Denver and they did beat Baltimore, two of the other division champions. Yeah. Denver it was early. They really dominated that game, though. I know the final says it was 31-25 in mile high, but they led that game 31-11 before uh, Manning threw two late touchdowns. They really crushed Baltimore in at home. But other than that, they didn't. I mean, those were those games occurred in September and October. From November on, they beat Chicago in a real prime time slobber knocker. Yeah, it, w- it was not. Yeah, but that it was funny because I have a lot of good friends, as you know, out in Chicago, mm-hmm. and they actually invited me to that game, and I turned it down on the read because it was funny at the time. Here's how things have changed so much since those two teams played on November 11th. Okay, almost two months ago. I was having a debate at the time with my Chicago friends who was the best team in football, Houston or Chicago, at the time. And I told them I didn't want to go because I liked Houston to win that game. Now, they did. But after that, after winning in Chicago, Mm -hmm. here's Houston's wins. Jacksonville, Detroit, Tennessee, Indy. They got killed by New England, killed by Minnesota, beaten by Indianapolis. You know what's funny? The Jacksonville and Detroit wins. They were kind of at their apex going into that. And they didn't look good in either. Those, they needed overtime for both of them, right? That yeah. was the canary in the coal mine. Sneaking past those two teams was the precursor of their collapse. Yeah. We couldn't see it at the time, but in retrospect, it's very clear. Yeah, so my end result is I, Cincinnati could win. I could see them winning this game outright. I don't know. Do you, that's that's my logic is that I think Houston's going to win, but I like the four and a half. And oh no! Cincinnati, I'm saying I think Cincinnati could steal the game. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I think I think Houston will win, but I I like Cincinnati with a four and a half, and think that there's enough of a chance they could win outright. Yeah, that, that's what steers me there. Yeah, I just think I mean when you look at Cincinnati down the stretch, on the other hand, they were seven and one straight up against the spread, straight up and against the spread. Their only loss was by one to Dallas on a last second field goal, a game that they dominated. I watched a good deal of that game. Dallas stole that one late. Right. So 
you know, Cincinnati is kind of like a Washington, a team they beat early in the year, by the way. That's kind of in that they could be heading into this on an eight-game win streak had that Dallas field goal not gone through. You know what's so funny? I look at Cincinnati's season. They started three and one, then they dropped the five, uh, or, or sorry, the four in the middle there, and then came out strong at the end, only losing one of their last seven games. Their season, I've seen it play out, but for me, a lot of times, and and, and right right now, God, I wish I had the time to uh, to be in a bowling league as much as I love doing it. But that that was like me back in the day with the donut game in the middle be like 200 160 200 I, that's exactly like what they did they had that middle there and it fooled me because i thought they were returning to where they were going to be at and then they me went too. on that streak at the end yeah Here, here's the interesting thing they got crushed everyone remembers this week one the first game of the double header on monday night by baltimore right 44 to 13 after that they only lost by one possession one time all year and it was in cleveland yeah. Of all places. Yeah. So, w again, that was kind of in the midst of that 0-4 straight up and against the number run they had. So, this is a dangerous team as an underdog. Houston, for me, it boils down to the disappointment of having to play this week. They haven't they, – they were of the mindset that was not going to be the case for the last month. Now it is. Reality sets in. Does Gary Kubiak get fired if they lose this game? I don't think so. I, you never like to fire. He, you all, you never like to fire a coach. Well, I, I, you're, you're out. I, can he you take them to the promised land? I, I don't know that he can, Kyle, okay, but okay, you're here. asking me, should he be? I, I, should I, he or, be? Or, no. Well, should, should he be? Maybe. But will he be? No. No. Oh, this, is like, really? this is a guy who survived multiple, like, eight and eight seasons when they were supposed to go far. See, that's interesting. Because Remember to how me, long they were the hipsters' chance so yeah. many years and never even made the playoffs? Yeah. Why would he get fired at, at, at 12 and 4 after he survived all those years? Has he plateaued? It's kind of like the Mike Brown principle. Okay, he can get you near the top of the mountain, but he ain't going to get you to the top. Here's the problem, though. And, it, we, we, you know. And now they are behind. It, what's Black tough about Monday playoffs, yeah, Eve? you're right. But Kyle, the, 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 the pick of the litter is going to be gone. You think by Sunday? Unless, you know, that well, could be. Could I be. Mean, I, mean, I mean, look, I mean, they've talked about that. We you could know, be getting into Andy, I mean, Andy Reid could be employed. We could be getting one a second-tier possibilities here. Yeah, uh, that's true. I how guess it depends. You how know, about you the vest? He won at two levels, you know? Hey, how about him? <laughs> I just wanted to troll you on that. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase my question. Okay. Let's say, all right, because Andy Reid, it seems like Andy Reid will be re-employed by the weekend. Yeah. By, looks, it looks, it, like it looks like Arizona, which, yeah. I, by the way, a different podcast for a different day. Yeah. Uh, bad hire all around. And not a great choice by him working for the cheap ass Bidwells. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Let's say the other teams have not filled their vacancies, and, and you know maybe mm -hmm. a Chip Kelly still out there, and you know some of these other guys in the pros. And Houston then loses, and they can still get their pick of the litter. That could make a difference. Okay. That that definitely could make a difference. But yeah, I, I don't think he will be. Should he be? You could make an argument that they've plateaued, but he's survived so much already. Uh, although, again, the expectations were sky high this year. And to go out around earlier than last year, yeah, the perception could be. That they've taken a step back again. Yeah. I, I really think that, I mean. And in a conference, it's, it's a there for the taking. It's a, it's good. Because here's, look, do you agree? We, They could win this week, certainly. They're not going to beat. They would be pigeonholed in New England because they're the three yeah. seed. They have to play the two. They would have they're to go up to New game. England. They're not going to go further than And yet I would year. pick them probably over New England at home. But I certainly would not you pick. You would. Well, Maybe not in light of the collapse. H had they not collapsed, but then the, but then two and New England the if three. If they won out after the New England loss, okay, they're not, built up. Not, they got not even one out. But if they didn't look as stinky as they looked the last okay. couple weeks, and they were the two, I'd pick them. I certainly won't pick them on the road against uh, New England the next week. So we've already uh, given away so a little agree. bit of what we think. Yeah. yeah okay. So so we agree on, we agree on the first Cincinnati one here. plus four and a half. Yeah. Saturday night. I know a game that you have an umbrage with the, that it got the Saturday night spot. Minnesota, the, the dog turd team of the playoffs playing on uh, the Saturday night prime well, time Saturday game. Night's oh, because the th there's snowflakes in Lambeau no, Field and the housewives are going to want to tune in. <laughs> Ugh. No, it's because it's because Fox wanted RG3 and they had to. Well, you did set me straight on that, that it yes, wasn't NBC's yeah, choice. Yeah, NBC okay. gets the leftovers okay. so, while CBS is allowed to pick their main course, same with okay. Fox. So. But here's the thing, and plus you have Adrian Peterson, you have a rematch, and shame on me, I wanted to do a little research here, because doesn't it seem like this happens like every other year, it really where there's does. a week 17 rematch in the playoffs? Yes, a lot. And I think a lot of those times, you know, 
I'll send you some. I'll do a little re looking into this. Okay. Shame on me that I'm not doing it live <laughs> for the show. But I'll send you, and you can post it on the blog. I, I think the team that wins the regular season game often comes back and wins the playoff matchup. I was going to say, I thought it was the other way around. Okay, maybe I, I could lost. be wrong. That's okay. interesting. I'm, we're going to have to do some digging okay. into that. and po you, you post it on the blog, and you can tweet okay. it out. Sure. Now, that said, I, I like Green Bay, minus the, minus the points. I do, too. Even, even if it's two possessions. It I, was eight uh, at the start. Now, now it's, it's seven, seven and, and a half. half. I, think I think they're going to tattoo them. Going away, yes. yes. I, I think this, when you if you were to ask me what, I mean, obviously the point spread indicates this, but this is has the likelihood for the biggest blowout. I just think. And I watched it, a good deal of these teams play the game last week. I just don't understand how Adrian Peterson gets off these runs. Like, how do you not know that's coming? How do you not go nine in the box? Yes, against I that? mean, and no just make Harvin. Ponder beat yeah. you because he can't do it. He can't. Now, Minnesota, here's the key. They got out to the lead last week mm -hmm. at home. Scene shifts in level. Green Bay has to come out strong in this game. They have to. If they can get in front of Minnesota, Minnesota's not a team yeah. that's built to come from behind. This could be because like 44-14 if they get out to an early I'm not, lead. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go that far, but I just think in Green Bay, too, remember the early playoff exit last year? Right. Obviously, they were one and done. The Giants came, the red-hot Giants came in right. Lambeau. They beat them. That's going to stick in their craw. Rodgers is a guy who gets motivated kind of when the buzzards are circling, so to speak. Uh, and it's not the Bears, but it's a decent-sized rivalry. Oh, sure. M Minnesota drew the bullseye of going in with a team that uh, they don't like and doesn't like them. And uh, Granted, Minnesota's kind of been the little brother in this thing in recent years, but having said that, it's still a rivalry, so they're not going to sneak up on Green Bay two weeks in a row. And let's face it, they snuck up on Green Bay last week. Yeah, and, and kind of, you know, Green Bay, um, the thing about it is, you know, they, they were playing for a bye. That's kind right. of the disheartening. But uh, for all you betters out there, Green Bay 9-2 and two against the number when they don't cover the previous week. So well, pretty good bounce back under McCarthy. Um, so, so I like Green Bay to kind of win this one big. And it was also their first loss in a while to the Vikings. They right. might have been due. Um, I don't see Minnesota scoring 37 points again, right. particularly on the road rookie quarterback. So Well, not only that, I mean, we all have this sense. P people have in their heads when they look at these teams – Green Bay struggles to run the ball. Minnesota's pretty good against the run. The numbers are, are, are very, very close on that. You know, Green Bay's offensive yardage, Minnesota's defensive yardage uh, on the run. So it's a thing where the Vikings are not going to be able to make the Packers one-dimensional. It's not a good matchup for them in that way. And, and McCarthy before last week was 30-12 and 12 against the number in NFC North games. Yeah. Just so you know. I mean, he, yeah. he's really owned this division. I just, I mean, certainly... I can't see Green Bay losing outright. No, uh, I no. mean, I mean, I mean, if there's one team that I cannot see winning outright this week, it's Minnesota. Well, it's it's the biggest line and deservedly yeah, the biggest, so. Yeah, it's the big, exactly. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm with you. The hook at seven and a half doesn't. What even do scare I always me. say? Yeah. If you're going to take the underdog, you want to have so, unless if it's a double digit number. Right. You want to have some belief right. that the underdog is going to win the game straight up. I have no belief that the underdog is going to win this game straight up. Right. So I'm taking Green Bay. They'll advance to play San Francisco I next agree. week in a game that I think we'll disagree on. All right, so again, uh, two, two games that we uh, agree on thus far. Uh, I go to the Sunday games here. Mm -hmm. uh, a rivalry a couple of ways over. Indianapolis stole the Colts from Baltimore. You got Chuck Pagano with his homecoming to Baltimore. Storylines abound. Ray Lewis, uh, by God, it's his last ride. Uh, yeah. Announced today that this will be – I like. I hope he plays. Saddest day since he cut two dudes in the ATL oh, years ago. Of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, we have to go to that. What, <laughs> yes. you know, what, what have I always said? What a job. You know, yeah, Ray <laughs> Lewis, in my opinion, the greatest middle linebacker of all time. Sorry, Dad. Okay. Dick, Dick Buckus says hi. Yeah, big deal. <laughs> big deal. Uh, Mike Singletary you, you is know, waving you know, at you. You know, what, you know what Ray Lewis says? Goodbye, okay? <laughs> Okay, Ray Lewis, greatest middle linebacker of all time. I hope he plays. Even if he doesn't, though, the Colts just had a very fluky season. Yes. And this is the side that I like the least, I'll admit, of the four games. If you were to rank the four games in in terms of how much I like them, mm -hmm. this would be fourth. The, other, the Saturday games, I would say Green Bay is my second favorite pick of the week, minus the number. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati is my third favorite, plus four and a half. This is my least laying the number with a Baltimore team that, as you know, I have not liked for much of the year. I mean, when they were nine and two, I thought they were completely fraudulent. Yeah. But, and it's six and a half here, and it's been six and a half through the week. here's the key. This is still a good home team. 
Right. I know they lost twice during the regular season, including once to the immortal Chaz Batch. <laughs> but the key is their offense. This game could go over. If you're looking to make a bet in this game, now yeah. I know, you may want to consider the over. Baltimore on the season averages 24.9 points per game, okay? Okay. At home, they average 31.7. Mm-hmm. So that tells you right there, they average about two touchdowns more per game at home than on the road. Under John Harbaugh, this has been a tremendous team at M&T Bank Stadium. Yes. I believe it's called. Mm-hmm. So the, I know they didn't finish well, but I feel the market's kind of shifted too low. And the Colts, man, when you look at their results, a lot of close wins over bad teams. Beat the Vikings by three. They did stun the Packers by three at home. Beat the Browns by four. Tennessee in overtime. Dolphins by three. Buffalo by seven, Detroit by two, Tennessee by four, Kansas yeah. City by seven, Houston by 12. And then one could make a case that, you know, last week's game was probably their best game of the season. I just see it coming to an end here. Luck threw a lot more interceptions on the road than he did at home. Baltimore, I think their defense, you know, by God, it will not be Ray Lewis's last ride for at least one more week. And I, I think the Ravens, you know, the, I really like it how it's under seven. Because, yeah. you know, obviously seven being the key number that it is. So that's kind of what leads me to believe Baltimore is the play here. And, and especially if Lewis were to play, I think that's kind of a emotional factor to counteract the whole Pagano thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, you got to wonder how many more times the Colts can rise up with all this stuff. I mean, you know, it, they've been played such inspired football all year. Eventually, the clock strikes midnight. Well, we, I mean, we, we've seen the two fluky teams the last two years win Seattle at seven and nine remember they beat New Orleans and yeah. then last year Tim Tebow what a wild ride he had us on mm-hmm. didn't he beat it beat Pittsburgh but both those teams were home remember Indianapolis on the road no thank you Baltimore wins this game probably very close to the number by about seven or ten points and, and just being here is kind of Indianapolis Super Bowl versus Baltimore again who with where they're Baltimore's at. a team that I know they didn't finish well but you're yeah. right they were thinking about a month ago, Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, for them, it's really Super Bowl or bust. It's late in the day for them because this is a team. I said this to you, I think, a year ago on the program that Baltimore is a team that they don't take the rap as a choke artist, but year in and year out, they're in the conversation and come up short, and this is going to be, I think we agree, one more year where that's the case. Well, here's the thing, and I, I think I read this in the Football Outsiders preview. Okay. And it was a, one of the great assessments of a franchise that I'd read in a long time, mm-hmm. at least in recent years. Some years, it was about Baltimore, obviously. Some years, Baltimore's better than New England. Mm-hmm. Some years, Baltimore's better than Pittsburgh. There's no years where they're better than both. That's true. And, you know, Pittsburgh obviously didn't make the playoffs this year, but Baltimore's not as good as New England. Right. Uh, they're probably not as good as Denver no. either because they lost to them recently at home. They're probably not as good as Houston this year. I mean, no. granted... Again, a lot's changed. And I think Houston would have beat him with Matt Schaub last year. I've said that all along. Road game or no, I yeah, think Houston I mean, that was That won. game finished right around the number. Interesting. I think Baltimore was minus seven and a half there. So, yeah. um, you know, the Colts defense, by the way, giving up 29 points per game on the road against yeah. the Bal- that Baltimore offense. I just gave you those numbers. I think the Ravens are going to put points up in this game. I'm more inclined to go over than anything else, but... You know, we're, we're picking all of them here in the playoffs. Yeah. I say lay the six and a half with Baltimore. You and I are three and three on concurrence here. I will say also probably my toughest one of the weekend because here's my thing, though. For, for everything that you just said burying Indianapolis, I, I believe, as ludicrous as you may think it is, I think they have a puncher's chance. Yes, they do. I, I, I think I, I would be less surprised okay, so if we agree they on that. beat Baltimore uh-huh. than Minnesota beating Green Bay. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're nowhere near Minnesota ask. We agree on that. But the thing of it is, so I was thinking to myself, they probably won't win, but I'm probably going to take them to cover. But then again, I was looking at it, and it looks like the Sharps are on Baltimore, and I do try to make it my business these days whenever possible to try to go that way. So, yeah, that was what You're going me. with Baltimore. I'm then. going with Baltimore. Okay, we're, well. we're three for three. Maybe going to be four. I think we're going to be four for four. We'll see uh, on agreeing. Well, you know how, I mean, you know who I'm going with in this last game. Well, you got, we both have one of these teams above the line and one of these teams below the line. And I don't think either one of us believes that being at home is going to make that big of a difference here. This is a rematch in this game here between the cities of the 1978 and 1979 NBA Finals. 
as Seattle and Washington, D.C. do I battle had again. no idea where you were going there. <laughs> I was like, what is this a rematch of? Well, between the cities. The Sonics, I was trying to think, I'm like, these teams didn't play this year. And the then I was like, when did they ever play in the playoffs? The Sonics and the Bullets split the 78 and 79 NBA Finals. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm grasping on the rivalry end, yeah. Kyle. Another reason to salute the great David Stern for taking us out of those doldrums. <laughs> well, those are the days when contests were honestly decided. Yeah, and it was, it was, yeah you know what else they split in 78 and 79? Those what? two teams, probably a bag of Coke, okay? <laughs> I mean, Jesus. I mean, the NBA, yeah. <laughs> That, that was back when you could play in the NBA Finals, drive home, and then watch them on tape delay. Yes. Maybe you could watch yourself. Hey, look at what I did there. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Seattle, uh, yeah, again. Now pass me a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle is a three-point favorite. This started as I a don't pick. like All that. All the money is going in one direction. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. And as a guy who sometimes I went that way with, with the money, sometimes I didn't, Sometimes the unwashed masses, the mouth breeders, are right. And I think this is one where they are because I, I cannot really make a case for Washington in this game. Yeah, puncher's chance, I suppose, but you're looking at an RG3 who doesn't look to be 100% Correct. physically. And that's huge. That's, that, that's a big part of it as well versus, again, I agree with you on the balance of the Seattle team right now and everything they can do. Again, uh, it is a team that's giving up uh, a little bit more than 100 yards per game on the ground. So not that's not great. That's not horrible. I mean, it's fairly decent. But, I mean, Alfred Morris may have some opportunities there. There's more opportunities to, to pound the ball on the ground, certainly, than to try to pass on Seattle with that secondary. But I just don't see it with, uh, with Washington. I don't think that anybody, uh, Garcon or, or Santana Moss or anybody else, is going to be able to get enough separation on that secondary. Yeah, which is outstanding. And I think that, yeah, I mean, S Seattle with their multidimensional offense, uh, which certainly includes Russell Wilson running the ball a lot as well as uh, passing. He's gotten to be so uh, comfortable in operating that, the offense at this time. And, again, a little bit of a, a disagreement with uh, uh, FDH Director of Research, Nate Noy, not necessarily on who's going to win the game, but on my certitude for, for Seattle. He says, well, rookie quarterback on the road. And I said, does being a rookie quarterback at home outweigh everything else that Russell Wilson has? And I would submit that the answer is a clear no. I want to tell you something that no one in the national media agrees with. I think Russell Wilson is better than RG3. I, he's had a more impressive year on balance, and I, I think we'd have to say. I, I, I don't think you can definitively say one's better than the other. I, I like Andrew Luck better than both of them. Sure. But just because he's asked to do more. Right. But I could make the case Wilson had the better year. I mean, the, both of them, I think both the offensive coordinators, Daryl Bevel in Seattle and Kyle Shanahan in Washington, did great jobs managing both yes. guys. And, you know, by the way, while we're tipping caps to coaches who I've made fun of for mm -hmm. a long period of time, the Shanahans deserve some credit. Yeah. I think this was Mike Shanahan's best job of coaching ever. And this is a guy who won two Super Bowls, but he also had John L.A., who, as you know, controversially I regard as the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. And then he also had Terrell Davis, who at the time was the MVP. Joe Montana and Otto Graham say hi. Okay, one guy played when there were six teams, the other guy the greatest receiver of all time. <laughs> I'll leave it up to the listeners to decide who is who. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Terrell Davis was the MVP. It was, right. best, was arguably the best player in the league those two years. Right. Outside of those two years, Mike Shannon never really did anything. This is as impressive a job as he's ever done. But I'm with you. I know the home. The Seattle's going to get a taste of their, their medicine. I've seen some Washington home games mm -hmm. down the stretch. This crowd is jacked, man. Right. They love it. But the people who are picking Washington here. I think are A, relying on Seattle's history on the road, mm -hmm. which is not great under Pete Carroll. I mean, they're unbeatable at home. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, they're not going to be playing at home unless if they draw Minnesota in a very unlikely NFC championship game. Right. But they seem to have turned the corner. I know they're only 3-5 and five on the road this year, mm -hmm. and one of those wins was in Toronto, which wasn't even a true road game. But they beat Chicago, and that signal will turn on. This is just a much different team now than they were in September. Yes. So is Washington, for that matter. I just think that when you look at the two teams, if you watch them, Seattle's just way better at everything. What does Washington do better than Seattle? I mean, I guess you could say run the ball, but but I think it's somewhat ne negligible. Marshawn Lynch is a beast. Lynch and Morris, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it, it's a compliment Other to Alfred. Other than Peterson, those yeah. are the two best running backs in the NFC, right? Yeah, it, it's a compliment to Alfred Morris to mention them in the same breath. I mean, he deserves it, but Marshawn Lynch, like you said, has been beast-like of the entire season here. 
need a receiving core statistically is setting the world on fire, but part of that is because both quarterbacks run the ball uh, a lot. Uh, and again, both quarterbacks have uh, excellent running backs there. For, for Washington, again, and, and this to me is the most fascinating game of the weekend, I think that's why the point spread is the closest and started as a pick. Uh, for Washington, I think it's going to be try to pound the ball, uh, try to go for time of possession, try to do whatever you can yeah. to keep Seattle's offense kind of off balance. But again, Seattle's not Green Bay. They're not one of these rhythm offenses out there where it's easier to like, OMG, they've been on the sidelines for 20 minutes. Seattle's going to come out there and try and run their offense no matter what. Uh, and, and when you have as much ground and pound in it, as you do from both Lynch and Wilson, that's harder to take you out of rhythm than if you're doing like deep passing on a regular basis. Seattle's point differential is plus 167. Only New England and Denver were better. Mm -hmm. Seattle beat San Francisco. They split with them, but they did beat them once. They okay. beat New England. Yeah. Granted, it was late, but Russell Wilson made one, you know, and I guess it wasn't one heck of a throw. The Patriots secondary was more of a, a Michigan Wolverines outback memorial, what the hell were they doing kind of situation. <laughs> Uh, they beat Green Bay fair and square, from where right I away, sat. S uh, <laughs> side, note on, side note on that. Well, gonna, well, I guess that's the second week in a while I've thrown that <laughs> troll move out there, so there's no need to hit it. Well, well the, the fair and square win they had over Green Bay, for me, from my vantage point, it was a clean victory. Well, from your vantage point, well, I'll, I'll see your troll and raise you one. You just mentioned Michigan there. Boy, that Denard Robinson is going to make a great special teams player in the CFL, isn't he? <laughs> I haven't given the guy an NFL job. No. Can't be an H back? No. <laughs> no, he By won't. the way, yeah, you're. Uh, 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 <laughs> can you do me a favor? Ask your dad, what the hell has happened to quarterback play in the Big Ten? Because <laughs> they all stink. Except for Aston Miller. Well, I mean, I guess if you, you take throwing out of the equation, he's pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So, <laughs> very good. My pick is as much as I hate the line move and I hate road favorites. Road favorite Kyle to join road favorite Ricky? I loved this game as a pick -em. I like it a lot less at three. Here's my thing. Get the RG3 mouth breathers. Vite. If, it, if you can get this game under three, mm -hmm. fire. Okay. But this could be a... <laughs> Look, I know you and I may go toe-to-toe -to -toe next week in a potential Seattle-Atlanta matchup. Maybe not. Wow. I like what I'm hearing out of you. Okay. But... Um, I think this game might be more challenging, believe it or not, than Atlanta, potentially, for Seattle. Washington, they can run the ball. They're hot. But when you look at Washington, like, Seattle's dominated. Right. I mean, they've cr – I mean, granted, some of those teams weren't very good. Arizona's no good. Right. Buffalo's no good. Fortnite is pretty good, and they beat them 42-13. to 13. Now, right. he's at home. I understand that. Right. And here's another thing, too. I think it was good for them to have a tough – game that last week against St. Louis that they had to come back and win. Yeah. People are going to look at that, oh, Seattle, maybe they peaked a little too early. Don't sleep on St. Louis. Jeff Fisher did a hell of a job for that 7-8-1 yeah. and one team. And they were, I believe, covered every single division game, St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. So, they were I mean, strong. St. Louis played very well in NFC West You're, you're right. That, that might have been the tone-up that Seattle needed to kind of come back to earth yeah. after that, that big streak there. And you talk about Shanahan and arguably his best year of coaching. The irony is they're 10-6. and six. They were three and six before that streak, and Shanahan was looking like he wasn't going to survive past this year. So it's a thin line. By in the, the way, NFL. by the way, Donovan McNabb, maybe Mike Shanahan just needs the right black quarterback. Well, yeah, I, okay, I think we, I, I think we saw that this year. I don't want to go into Rob Parker territory here or anything, <laughs> but uh, you know, but you know, I mean, you know, some of his, you know, I think Donovan McNabb. Okay, while well, you're puking in the Super Bowl, Terrell Owens is on a broken leg, giving the most courageous performance I've ever seen in a losing effort, and he's the bad guy. <laughs> Uh, Why? Because well, Donovan McNabb's a nice guy. Well, I don't like Donovan McNabb. I just wanted to. Rag I, I, don't on, like I just wanted to rag on someone. I don't like randomly. Donovan McNabb either. Uh, so I can agree with you on that. So Seattle wins here. Here's the thing too. Seattle, I believe, is number one in the league in points allowed. I'm almost positive they are. Yeah, 245 they gave up. Yeah. Uh, the next closest was the 49ers at 273. And if you go back and look at history, the teams that give up the fewest points. Uh huh. They typically go places. Washington gave up 388. Yeah. Their defense. I it's mean, porous. Yeah, their defense is not very good. I mean, it, it improved a little bit towards the end, but I think Seattle's going to make some big plays. Mm -hmm. And Washington with a, like you said, RG3 at less than 100% will not make as many. Seattle wins this game uh, on the road probably by around a touchdown.
Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. So you and I actually concurred on all four of the games uh, this weekend. That's boring. Uh, yeah, Cincinnati and, and I don't like the, and, and I don't, then, uh, and I don't Green Bay, like Baltimore and uh, Seattle to uh, win and cover. I don't like what you're saying too about moving forward. I thought I, I was in pre- anticipating well, next week having this knockdown, drag out brawl in the I, NFC. I I, I want to petition the league for the the unfairness of how this is going to look because I've been sticking up for Atlanta all year long, and again Atlanta is going to draw the buzzsaw team and look like they're nothing but a bunch of choke artists. Now I will give you this. That game last year against the Giants was such an abortion. I mean, I got nothing to say about that. How you lose that game 24-2, to two, I picked them to win it outright. I got nothing to say about that. It was that. kind of embarrassing that they actually got a safety rather than being shot, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, 24 to nothing would have been more dignity. But uh, the, the, the Green Bay game the year before, again, Green Bay went on to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, they got their doors blown off, but Green Bay, as we saw in the Super Bowl, really more of kind of a dome team anyways as far as their setup goes. They're it, great indoors, until, uh, they discounting are. the loss last week. They are, and it's just, I've been sticking up for Atlanta all year long, and I can, I'm calling it a week and a half out. I'm going to end up with egg on my face because it's going to look like same old, same old Falcons. I will pick Seattle to win that game uh, outright against Atlanta, and don't be surprised, do, even though Atlanta's the one seed, let's, let's try and make an early guess on the line. Do you, do you think the line ends up being anywhere close to a pick, or does Atlanta get something of a benefit of the doubt? Well, for home field and the week of rest, Okay. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a little fax for the blog. I apologize. Okay. I, was, I was busy doing things, booking vacations, and okay. trying to figure out my garage door, which broke on me this afternoon. Ooh. And I wanted to. It's fixed now. Okay. By the way, was, uh, the 65 year old man from you know the building down came over and he did all the work. So oh, good. Well, I said, including shoveling too. I, I I mean I was just I mean he looked at me like. What are you good for? Yeah. <laughs> but well, I mean, you know, you have impressive neighbors. I, I understand uh, these, these folks really shine under pressure. Yes, no yes they do. It. They really do. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to look at history because I have all the history down. Um, I don't think there's ever been a road favorite in the, the divisional round. Yes. Okay. Now, we've seen them more and more in the wild card round. I don't right. have last year's results in front okay, of me. Okay, you're right Shame about on that. Me. I'm trying to think, what were the wild card games last year? Pittsburgh, be, I, I can do this real quick. If you, this is going to be live. Well, Houston beat ever. Cincinnati. Okay, they were a home favorite. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans play? beat Detroit. They were yeah. ho- they were a big home favorite. Yeah. Um, Pittsburgh lost as a road favorite outright to Denver. Tim to Denver, Tebow, yeah. by God. Um, and then what was the early uh, Sunday game then? It would have been an NFC game. Was it? Uh, Giants beat the Falcons. Giants beat the Falcons. I yeah. think the Giants were, I believe, a dog, slight dog. Oh yeah. no, they were they were at home. They were they were probably favorite. Right. They, I'm sure they were favorite, but yeah. slight favorite. So. I'm looking back here at road favorites in the wild card round. You're right about that for the divisional round. I, They're I usually not. There was, believe it or not, there was two in 2010. Okay. One of them lost outright. New Orleans. Uh, so the, oh, the, the Seattle. Uh, the yeah. Se- the big road favorites have stunk. Baltimore did win as a three-point road favorite going into Kansas City that year. Um, that, that was the infamous game where Sean Payton before the lock uh, before the game in the locker room. You could beat these guys wearing your flip flops. So yeah, that was. But road fan, it looks like I'm taking a look here. They've it, go back to 2007, 2007. It didn't happen a lot. Okay. It, it re- there was one year. I think it was 2008. Okay. Uh, which, by the way, interesting here. That was the first year Atlanta lost to the playoffs. Okay. They lost the eventual NFC champions that year too, Arizona. All right. So they've always run into the hot team. So it looks yeah. like before 2007, though. It very rarely happened. I'm looking for you know, Tennessee in 2003 okay. was a one-point favorite at Baltimore and won. Okay. Some of these lines will always so it vary, won't, It folks. won't like, happen in this round. You and I are, I'm sure we're going to differ on the other NFC game. In okay. The oh, round. yeah. Okay. Uh, just, a, just to bring a, this full circle. Yeah. Yes. All right. So we're, we're going in. Let's do it right now. Let, let's, yeah. let's set the things. We're both let's make our it, Super Bowl pick. Let's go through the playoffs and make right, our so straight-up picks right C- now. Seattle over Atlanta. We both agree with that. I believe Seattle will beat Atlanta. And I know we're going to disagree on the next one. I think Green Bay is going to go into Frisco and uh, do them in I that game there. I disagree. I think it's a terrible matchup for Green Bay going against that pass. Which Renewal of the uh, 90s uh, rivalry, by the way. Well, and I'll tell you what. Uh, you talk about rematches. I ain't going back to the 79 finals, because NBA finals, because <laughs> I don't have have to okay. because these teams played in week one and yeah. San Francisco really beat up Green Bay. I know the final was 30 to 22 was not that close folks. Green Bay cheated in that game by the way. They, they want to complain about Seattle. There was a clip in the back on a Randall Cobb punt return okay. that should not have counted so I have 30-15 as my unofficial <laughs> final. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so filed it with the league. <laughs> so I've got a Seattle-San Francisco 
NFC Championship game. I got, I got uh, oh the boy, here Seattle go. going to Green Bay for the NFC Championship. And you Mr. know that's the one Goodell wants. Goodell will rig it to get that. And I'm outcome. surprised you would support him. I, I, I thought you were the leader of the. I, I thought you were the leader of the uh, anti Roger Goodell fan club. Well, I, I just want integrity and non David Stern practices in sports. I, I'm just, I'm predicting it. I'm not saying I you want. You realize it. Roger Goodell and David Stern are the finest commissioners sports have ever seen. Uh, I don't, I don't like the way that the outcomes are. Uh, you gamed shall we say and this in green bay was on the uh, the business end of that on the monday night game Never. earlier in the season but they will get their revenge in the nfc championship game at home the green bay packers for the second time in three years your nfc champions so you're sticking with where I'm you were at the beginning with them i can't because guess what chicago didn't make the playoffs <laughs> <laughs> but i but here's the ironic thing okay look there's continuity here. Seattle beat Chicago in Chicago, and I that was right around the time I changed my pick to Seattle. Okay. I'm sticking with the, my NFC Championship prediction. Seattle, third time in three weeks, wins on the road. They go to San Francisco, and they win the NFC Championship. Any concern, Kyle Ross? Now, under your scenario, Seattle plays the NFC Championship game in the West time zone, but we're looking at Seattle to Washington, Seattle to Atlanta, and then... You're looking at a lot of time zone travel in three weeks. Again, in your case, in Frisco, not so bad. They stay in a time zone. In my case, they go to Green Bay. They move two time zones over, and it's their third take move it, in three weeks. Take it from me. It's not hard to book a, book a luxurious hotel in this day and age. Okay. okay. I'll tell you what, it, I think. What about sleep cycles, Kyle Ross? <laughs> what I would do for them, and they'll know who their opponent, mm -hmm. if they will know. You know what? But they're the last game, so they draw a break. Okay. So they'll know. Going in to the wash, well, they wouldn't want to think about it, but it'll be they'll be pigeonholed because the three six game always determines the matchup, and that's Green Bay Minnesota, which is the day before. Right. They'll know where they have to go right away. They won't have to wait like a day to find the. Are result. we going to see a 49ers in Youngstown, yeah, Ohio scenario? I, I don't know if Coach him up Pete has one of his co-ed's ho houses he can borrow <laughs> on the East Coast, but we know there's one in Malibu, yeah. right, Charlie Weiss? Yeah. <laughs> but. They could stay out east for the week and okay. then, you know, come back. And it's remember the championship games are at weird start times too. They start later. There's no early game. Yeah, they, they, it's a three thirty and six thirty, yes. which is interesting because the way I have it, they're both going to be held on the west coast. Okay, because um, we, we can get to the AFC. Uh, but I'm picking Seattle to win the NFC. You're saying Seattle wins it at San Francisco. I'm saying Green Bay wins it at Seattle. You and I may have a shade more concurrence in the AFC. Well, I keep as it goes. I don't know. Uh, Here's the thing. Cincinnati Houston's the most coin flip straight up result for me of the week. Yeah, probably. Regardless of the outcome of that matchup. Mm -hmm. I, I I I believe the AFC Championship game will be New England at Denver. I, I don't I do see too. there's any way there's not. Well, I, that's the top true. two seeds will that's hold serve true. there. I got Houston going into New England. I think Houston's going to win but not cover. I got Houston going into New England and losing. Mm -hmm. And then I got Baltimore going into Denver and probably getting their doors blown off. Yeah, I could see that. Um, and then with New England at Denver, AFC Championship game, I'm taking New England. I am too because here's the thing too. You, you don't want to be Denver that has to win something like 13 in a row to win the Super Bowl. You're going to stub your toe one of these yeah, weeks. I you're, agree. Just, you're just going to. So there, there's that. There's the fact that Brady historically has played better than Manning in the head-up games that they've had against one another. Uh, I've had it pointed out to me, I forget by who, or, or I would credit them, that uh, uh, New England hasn't, I think it might have been uh, FDH Lounge dignitary Ben Chu pointing out to me that uh, New England hasn't played very well at Denver over the years historically. That is true. In the playoffs, that is true. So there, there is that. that. I think that was like Brady's first playoff loss or something. It was. was it yeah, it was actually. It was it the was only time Shanahan made the playoffs without didn't, John uh, I don't know if it was Champ Bailey. Somebody had a pick six that put the game away. It was like 27-13 or something. It was mm -hmm. a real shocker. But, yeah, I, so there, there's, there's some things that go against that. But, yeah, I think New England successfully defends their AFC championship. And, and we have – what I thought we were going to have last year, which is a Pack Patriots Super Bowl, uh, and ultimately this year, um, I will go with what I believe my pick would have been last year. Uh, last year, my pick was the Pats to go back to back. Uh, my pick at the beginning of the season was the pa the Pack to win the Super Bowl over Houston. I will maintain that the Pack over the Patriots in the Super Bowl. My Super Bowl is hmm. Seattle versus New England. Okay, and I'm going to pick the Seattle Seahawks to win the to Super coach Bowl. Coach them up, people. Coach them up. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I just think Seattle is red hot. I think they can. New England, look, New England would kind of break the Super Bowl loser's curse because no team that lost the previous year's Super Bowl has gotten back or has gone. 
except the Buffalo Bills when they kept doing it. But yeah, it's in recent years, in, in recent in, in years, like yeah. two thousand. Pardon yeah. me, but has gotten further. Uh, I, oh, further. Certainly, okay. no one's gotten further. I don't. Right. Th- I think it's been a long time since anyone's gotten back to the same spot. Well, the perfect team did that in nineteen seventy-two. <laughs> just, yeah, just, we just pointing like out. Randy Savage and Kurt Henning, either. <laughs> are we? But okay, I'm talking about like the last ten. When the, the okay. Super Bowl's losers' curse is more of a recent trend. It is that I believe started. A lot in, of like, times they miss the playoffs outright. Yeah, it, it was really strong for a Anytime while. Anytime the Squealers win the Super Bowl, they miss it the next yes, year. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I will. New England just always seems to gag in the Super Bowl. And I know we're talking a lot of hypotheticals the at that point. The last two times, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they've been the better team. I think that Seattle wins, and then I, when that happens, I'm going to force you to say something nice about my good friend Bill Simmons, who picked them before the year to win the Super Bowl. He picked Seattle to win the Super Bowl? Yes, he did. What do you got to say about the sports guy? Now? Wow. Wow. What do you got to say about that? I, I, I still think he's had a lot of hacky uh, takes on basketball over the years. Well, but, I like uh, his book. You should read his book. It's very good. His his, his book is great, but uh, his, his his takes on LeBron over the years have been a little bit uh, hacky. Why? Because you don't like LeBron anymore? Uh, no. That's, oh, that's absolutely that's, true. That's yeah. not why? Because that makes you don't me objective <laughs> and oh, yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah why? Because you don't like him? Well, well, because, because he took his talent somewhere else and his ball? We, we don't need to dissect the exact reasons, okay, Kyle okay. Ross. We don't need to get By the way. That. Little uh, bonus research here, live yes. on the air. I was looking through. Okay. I found a road favorite in the divisional round. Really? 1991. Dallas was a one-point favorite at Detroit. Detroit? They wow. lost 38-6. to six. I remember that, yeah. And there was also a game uh, a few years ago. It was a pick em, New Indianapolis at New England, okay. believe it or not. Uh, New England won big. So if the, so, needless to say, if there's a road favorite or pick em in that round, you don't like them. So that would be up against Seattle. We're not going to see that this year. There's no way. That the closest would be. Well, it's certainly not in the AFC. And then San Fran, because they beat Green Bay, would get probably more. They'd be around three and a half, four and a half. Atlanta would be the closest. But I You're s- still looking at at least two, right? At least. Yeah, at least because I think if I remember Vegas, if you can, I can tell you what about the Lions would be. If you give me just okay. a second here, I could tell you because I, I have the Vegas rankings handy here. If you just want to, yeah, I, I think that. Um, hold on here. Let's see if I can find it. What the yeah, Vegas we'll see if we can make a w- make a stab at what yeah, they're going to be. Yeah, I can guess what the hypothetical. Lines would be now. These look. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess two and a half. Atlanta minus two and a half. We'll see how close I am. It would be tough. Yeah, because you know why they're gonna want to. I think they're gonna be desperate to avoid Seattle money. So you could see that two and a half here. Hold yeah. on here. What's the? That's my guess. We'll see. Okay. Sometimes I'm close on these. Sometimes not so much. It's not going to be wildly more than that, and it's not going to be probably in the ballpark of pick them for the reasons that you have outlined previously. So. But it, look, it, it'll be like two and a half. Two three. and a half. Because okay. I think Seattle and Atlanta were fairly close yeah. in the final Vegas. Po- Seattle was actually a spot higher, okay. if I remember the Vegas power rankings. But it was the difference was negligible. So, yeah, you'd be looking at a two and a half, three point line for that. Well, so. and the thing is, too, it'll be very interesting to see. Isn't isn't the public going to be all over Seattle? Perception of Atlanta is a playoff choker. Seattle, red hot team. You know, yada, yada, yada. The Sharps, yes. I think there's this feeling among the general that Atlanta's got to win a playoff game, right? And I think and that that's could been be my to sense all year. I, all too. year I've been saying they but will win a playoff yeah, game, but that that's what pisses me off. Because then I'm, I know a week and a half ahead, I'm going to have egg on my face. Just because uh, if, if you gave them anybody else, if you if you gave them Green Bay, I think that they have at least a, a somewhat even chance of winning that game, or or even Frisco or whatever. But Seattle, no. Seattle just Seattle's a nightmare matchup for them. Okay, the line actually might be lower. Than we thought. Really? Well, it depends how much you give home field to the Falcons. Right now, the Seahawks, according to in the, and some of these vary by half point. There's different. There's not one, you know, Bible okay. poll for Vegas. Yeah. But I'm just looking at one here. They have Seattle currently rated a point and a half better than Atlanta. So if you factor in three for home, it swings the other way. Atlanta right. would be like a one and a half point home favorite. Um. So, yeah, it, it could be like two. So it, it probably won't get up to three. So you're probably looking at two, two and a half, I bet. Well, not only that. Play, depending how, you know, Seattle looks this week as well. And, and and here's the thing. We talk about, and we've been talking about all year, how, how much better the NFC is than the AFC. You're talking about a, a second week in a row where the AFC games could be kind of like yawners, media, mediocre type games, whatever. 
Seattle for the second week in a row looks like they could they would be in the best game of the weekend. Maybe Green Bay, San Fran, but I, both of those games are going to be barn burners. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Those will be two tough games. Yeah, whereas the AFC, look, everyone, New England and New England Denver. And Denver might as well have buys. Well, yeah, let's all be the honest. Way. I mean, it, it's interesting here. Let's just hypothetically say, you know, New England against Houston, that line – you know, it would be interesting because the poll I'm looking at right now would say the line would only be a touchdown. I was going to say six and a half. Yes, yeah, so that seems too low. I, I know they were four and a half. What they were four and a half in the first meeting. Houston gets a lot of residual respect for the overall season, though, don't they? That's weird that Houston getting less than seven. I, I think I think I think they put it a solid seven. Okay. Denver against Baltimore. Hypothetical line. That could be eight. Uh, yeah, it would be about it would be seven and a half, eight. Wow, yeah, yeah, that would yeah. be, and um, you know, but sin, you know, in, in case if you know, wow, look, Indianapolis finished way low. They finished 18 from the in the Vegas in this Vegas poll. I'm looking at if Indianapolis were to win and say play at New England, that line would be cool, uh, or Denver. Yeah, those lines would be around 10. That makes sense. Cincinnati would be fairly comparable to Baltimore, any Baltimore line, and that makes sense yeah. too. Yeah, Cincinnati so. and Baltimore are pretty close at this point in time, so. All right, so you're saying uh, as of now, and it'll be interesting. Let's revisit every week based on the outcome of yeah, results. Yeah, obviously, you know, you we know. reserve I mean, you know, you know, one of these, well, you know, New England, th- that pick's not going to change. Right. I cannot imagine my AFC picking, my changing at all. Yeah. E- even based on this week's results. Um, well, uh, it's going to be both home teams winning next week, and I got New England going into Denver and winning. And here's the thing, too. More often than not in recent years, the, the, the home teams on Championship Sunday go 50-50. So yeah. the fact that I'm going for Green Bay means that I'm going to go for uh, New England in that one. Now, you're picking actually both I, road I'd teams. I'd pick both road teams, yeah. That would be interesting to see when that last happened. But, yeah, that's, you know, so that that's that's something for us to look at. But, again, we'll monitor that as we go along. You're saying Seattle over New England in the Super Bowl. I am saying Green Bay over New England uh, in the Super Bowl. Our picks for this week, uh, Cincinnati, the lone dog for both of us, Green Bay, Baltimore, Seattle. Uh, the, the favorites. So you and I are in complete concurrence on our four picks for this week. Yes. So yes. we'll see how everything goes, and uh, we'll reexamine again uh, next week. Uh, a pleasure as always, uh, Kyle. We'll keep breaking us down all the way to the Super Bowl, my man. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, All Clear Channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio. Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Paper Mate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse and the Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements.